Hello and welcome to PSD Tats Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to show you another workflow using Photoshop and Lightroom. In this video, I'm going to use Lightroom 5 beta version and Photoshop CC. But the techniques I'm showing you here can be also done in the previous versions of these applications. I'm going to start with these five photographs that I took in Rome in Italy and I'm going to end up having a photograph like this using the two applications together. We are going to do a round trip starting from Lightroom, make some edits in Photoshop and then end up again in Lightroom and finish our nice HDR looking panorama here in the develop module. We are going to learn about the following features here. Photo merge, adaptive wide angle, content aware fill, and some Lightroom adjustments at the end. So let me start doing this already. I'm going to shift click on the last image just to select all of them together. And by the way, I am in the survey mode here in Lightroom and I turned off my panels on the left and the right by pressing tab. So that gives me more space to see the images side by side. Now here you can see already that it will be very important to try to avoid geometric distortion. So that's the main task of this photo merging project. And the way I'm going to start is first of all, bring all these images into Photoshop by using the photo edit in merge to panorama in Photoshop. And once you are in Photoshop, you will be able to choose from the following options. First of all, on the left, you can see the layout options. On the middle part, or in the source files, you can choose which files you want, but uh, Lightroom already selected these for us. And at the bottom, we have a couple of useful options, like blend images together will automatically mask the images, so we won't see the edges of these images. It, they will already be blended together. I'm going to keep that on. And also choosing geometric distortion correction will be useful, but Photoshop will need some manual help as well for that. So let me just leave these on. And the auto layout means that Photoshop will be able to stretch, scale, and skew the images to be able to create a perfect alignment and blend between them. So we let Photoshop do everything, what's possible to do with these images. And then I'm going to click on OK. In the meantime, while Photoshop is working, I just want to let you know that the reason why I took portrait format images is because whenever you do this and uh, you want to have a horizontal panorama, you will always capture more information vertically. So you will have much more height in your final uh, panorama than having just landscape photos stick together. Obviously, you have to take more pictures to capture the same area uh, using portrait mode, but it always gives you a better result at the end. And the percentage of the overlap between images should be around 30 to 40 percent. That works really well. You don't have to overlap more because it's unnecessary, but if you have only like 10 to 20 percent overlap, that might not work. So it's always good to give Photoshop a little bit more space to overlap these images. And as you can see, we already have our layers ready. So let me just show you the five layers here on the right. And these are the masks that Photoshop did with the auto blend feature. So inside the photo merge, we already blended these images together. And if I zoom closer, you can see it's a perfect alignment and perfect blend. But unfortunately, the image is a little bit bent. So what can we do with that? First of all, what I'm going to do is merge these layers together. So I select all the layers and press Command or Control E. That will make one layer. And then I can go to the filter menu and choose Adaptive Wide Angle. That's a very useful feature. And uh, it's mainly for this uh, distortion problems, what we have in this image as well. So I am going to first of all use this tool, the constraint tool, and start drawing constraints. The most important part is obviously the main building in this uh, scene, the Pantheon, which I would like to definitely have straight. So I already added a constraint there. 
and also this column here should be straight so I added another constraint and then we can start adding constraints here so this line of the street should be straight but it should be also straight compared to the other building so I'm going to first of all select this constraint and click on these corner points and set it straight I hold down shift and that will make it completely straight okay that looks much better already we can add another constraint here I uh, wasn't perfect alignment something like that and I would like to have this also straight so now it's getting already much better and maybe move this point a little bit up yes yeah, something like that and now that these lines are correct I have to make sure once again that this is straight but I think that one is straight in the back now I only need to make sure the vertical lines are straight so I'm going to select this one here first of all and rotate it a bit around something like that and we can do the same thing here on the right and I think what we could we achieve with this filter so let's le have a look at before and after so everything is nicely aligned now and we can click on OK and what we can do with this image is a bit of stretching it because now thanks to this adaptive wide angle everything looks a little bit squashed in the image so I'm going to use the free transform tool and I'm going to just stretch the whole image a little bit something like this looks much closer to the original aspect ratio of the image and now I can use the crop tool and I'm going to crop this bottom part it's not that important for the image and crop this here on the left as well a crop a little bit from the right and we can crop it up to somewhere here I might just crop it a bit more down that will be a good composition for the image and uh, I would like to fill in the sky um, so for that I am going to make a selection using the magic wand I click on this empty area here on the top and go to select menu modify expand and I expand it with by 30 pixels and I'm going to press shift backspace and choose content aware fill and I click on OK this is an automated feature and it will fill in those areas uh, with, by sampling from the image and it did quite a good job as you can see so that's perfect so we cropped it a bit the image but we also filled in some areas of the image and now we have quite a good result already so we can press command or control s to save this and that's a very good uh, way of working together with these two applications Photoshop and Lightroom because now that I did that once it saves this image it will go back straight to Lightroom and we can already go back to Lightroom and see that yes we have the final uh, merged image here in Lightroom and we can continue working on this image so that's what I'm going to do again I don't need the panels on the left so I hit them and I'm going to focus on the panels on the right so what I would like to do here first of all is uh, this is a new feature in Lightroom 5 using the radio filter this tool click here on the main building and I would like to just give a little bit more attention to this building and uh, using the radio filter I am going to increase the brightness of the shadow area so we see everything inside those columns or behind those columns and I'm going to maybe increase the exposure as well a bit so that looks already much better we can have a look at before and after by turning this little switch on and off so it's like adding some flashlight <laughs> on the main building here okay and um, overall that's enough for a local change but overall I am going to also increase the shadows just to see a little bit more details in the shadows and reduce the highlights of the image something like that maybe the whites as well okay and we can increase the clarity to have a nice almost HDR looking effect on this image and also we can increase the vibrance 
So that looks really nice. Let's have a look at before and after. If I press Y, I can see before and after. So before the change is done here in Lightroom. But if we go to these options here on the left and choose before, after, top, bottom, and press Shift tab to hide all the panels, then we can have a much better look at them. And I can even press L twice, and then we don't have any of the panels open. So you can see it was a whole workflow using these two applications, starting from Lightroom, doing some changes in Photoshop, and then coming back to Lightroom and finishing off the final panoramic image. I hope you learned some useful techniques on the way, and I hope you will join me next time as well here on PSD Touch Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention.